We'll start with opening remarks from the crew and then take questions. Commander Lee Archambault will be leading this crew on a 14-day mission to the International Space Station. Previously, he served as the pilot of STS-117 in June 2007. Lee? Hi, good afternoon. Thanks uh, very much for joining us today. We're very proud to uh, be able to share uh, basically who we are and what we're going to do for our next mission, STS-119. So before we uh, field any questions, I'd like to take a few minutes just to introduce all our crew members and, uh, and that will maybe uh, help you further direct any questions you have in, after the uh, introductions. To my immediate left is our pilot, Tony Antonelli. Tony is on his uh, first flight with, uh, with, our, uh, with the space program. Uh, he was a uh, 1989 graduate of MIT, uh, joined the Navy uh, shortly thereafter, spent uh, about six years flying F-18s, had uh, crews aboard the USS Nimitz, uh, became a test pilot after he went to the U.S. Air Force test pilot school, and uh, did some avionics testing out at China Lake. Uh, joined, the, uh, joined NASA in the year 2000, and he's been working in, uh, at NASA uh, as a very experienced Capcom here most recently, and prior to that, working our, a lot of our external tank and SRB and uh, SSME issues. Uh, we uh, got paired up with Tony here about a little over a year ago when the crew was assigned in October of 07. And uh, Tony is going to be on this flight, in addition to obviously being our pilot, Tony's going to be, uh, going to be our uh, space shuttle robotic arm operator, lead robotic arm operator, as well as uh, uh, doing a lot of the airlock duties, getting our EVA team ready for all the EVAs. To Tony's left is our uh, mission specialist number one, Joe Acaba. Joe also is on his very first uh, mission here with, at NASA. Joe comes to us from, uh, originally was born and raised in the Los Angeles area, Southern California. Anaheim uh, is where he grew up and considers his home. He uh, he's got a geology degree, both a bachelor's and a master's. Uh, Joe spent some time as a geologist there in the L.A. area. Went on from there to uh, serve two years in the Peace Corps uh, and down in the, uh, in the Dominican Republic. And then after that, he uh, uh, was a, uh, actually, right after that, he uh, went into the Bahamas as a uh, island manager for a marine research center. Joe went from there and served about four or five years as a teacher in the state of Florida, joined us in uh, the year 2004, joined NASA in the year 2004. And on our flight, in addition to being an MS-1, which is a flight deck engineer for both the ascent and entry phase of flight, Joe will also be assisting Tony with, one, with some of the uh, shuttle robotic arm operations. Tony will, uh, is part of our three-man EVA team, uh, and, and specifically uh, uh, Joe will uh, perform two EV EVAs out the door and the other two as our task IV inside the cockpit. To Joe's left is Steve Swanson. Swanee and I were uh, crew members together on STS-117. Uh, we came to, uh, as, in addition, we came to, to NASA in 1998 together, so I've known Swanee for a while. Swanee comes to us from Colorado uh, and ultimately uh, got a Ph.D. out of Texas A&M. Prior to joining NASA as an astronaut, he worked for about 10 or 11 years for NASA as a shuttle training aircraft engineer and flight engineer. Uh, Swanee's main role, in addition to being the MS-2, the flight tech engineer on ascent entry, will be to be our lead EVA uh, crew member. He's responsible for the planning and execution of all four EVAs. He'll perform three of those himself out the door, and one of them will be the task IV inside the shuttle cockpit. To Swanee's left is Ricky Arnold. Ricky on his first mission uh, as well. He and Joe are classmates here at NASA. Came to, get, came to us in 2004. Uh, Ricky's got a background that looks like a you know, State Department uh, person. He, uh, he uh, originally was born and raised in the Baltimore area, Bowie, Maryland to be specific, and he uh, spent about 15 years teaching around the world, uh, countries such as Morocco, Romania, uh, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, as well as here in the United States. I mentioned he joined us at uh, NASA in 2004. He's been working on several payload uh, issues uh, in and around the office and, uh, and was assigned to us, of course, as I said, in October of 07. During the flight, Ricky is going to be the uh, right-hand man for Steve Swanson as far as uh, coordinating all our EVAs. Ricky, like uh, Swanee, will perform three EVAs out the door and uh, one as a task IV. And in addition, Ricky is our photo TV uh, crew member responsible for all of our photo TV uh, operations. So if you don't like any of the photo or TV ops, that's the guy to come talk to. Uh, to Ricky's left is our, uh, our crew's elder statesman, John Phillips. John, uh, John's been here at NASA since 1996. Originally, he was a uh, Navy man, uh, Naval Academy, uh, Academy uh, graduate, and uh, he flew A-7s in the Navy for about 10 years. Uh, cruised uh, a couple of times, a couple hundred, uh, almost 300 uh, carrier landings. And uh, after that, after his 10-year uh, stint in the Navy, Navy, he went back to school, got a Ph.D., physics, 
and uh, served for a number of years at Los Alamos prior to joining NASA in the year 1996. John has got about, if you want to add up flight days in space, he's got about 90 percent of our crew's uh, experience level. He, uh, he served aboard STS-100 as an MS-2, and then he later on was an uh, engineer on uh, Expedition 11, so he has got a long, he's our one person on our crew who's got long duration space flight. Uh, so uh, John, again, has the, the overwhelming majority of our experience, and we're going to leverage that experience on our flight. Uh, John uh, is going to be the space station robotics arm operator for our crew. Uh, he'll do a lot of our mid-deck, uh, he's our mid-deck captain, so he's in charge of a lot of our mid-deck operations, which, as you probably know, is quite busy, both in the post-insertion immediately after we get the orbit to orbit and just prior to deorbit. And uh, John has got the unique... Uh, I guess uh, trademark is being a flight engineer on three different spacecraft, you know, that being the uh, shuttle, the Soyuz, and also the, uh, the International Space Station. And finally, to John's left is our shuttle rotating expedition crew member, Koichi Wakata. Koichi is a, uh, comes from Japan. He's a part of uh, the Japanese Space Agency. He's flown three or two missions already on shuttle, and uh, he both times he flew with a uh, uh, commander, very experienced Commander Brian Duffy, so now he'll get a chance to see what it's like on the other side. <laughs> We're, you know, Kuichi, as a, uh, as a member of our crew, but also a member, a future member of Expedition 18, uh, he goes up as our crew member, but uh, shortly after we dock on Flight Day 3, Kuichi immediately becomes a member of Expedition 18. However, that's not the, not the last uh, our crew members will see at Kuichi. He's going to be doing a lot of work, uh, particularly with John Phillips on all the uh, robotics operations through the duration of the mission. So you'll see and hear from Koichi a lot during our docked operations as he and John work together on the uh, space station robotic arm. So that's our crew. Uh, we're, of course, uh, I'm very proud of all, all, all of these guys. Uh, they they've bring an enormous amount of wealth, uh, uh, space flight uh, experience, as well as just uh, knowledge and other uh, fields that we could, we're going to really leverage on this mission. And uh, so with that, uh, I'll turn it over to you guys for questions. So thank you very much. All right, we're going to start with questions here at the Johnson Space Center. If you'll please identify yourself and your media organization. Uh, thank you. It's Mark Caro from the Houston Chronicle, and I think this is uh, for, for Lee, but any crew member. This is the last of the solar power modules. They're, they've been pretty interesting every time they're uh, flown to be installed. And I guess I'm wondering kind of what your lesson learned from the past experience um, that you guys have taken and are applying to this mission.